talk to me about you the work person. very closely with um, lighting designers, yeah. Michael Whitfield, for example. Well, yeah, and to begin with, in um, I have a fairly unorthodox way of beginning a play. The first thing I did make for the model are the little characters, half inch to a foot. In the model box, the two lamps either side, I sketch the um, the sets around those. It's like making a sketch stand up, rather than doing it flat, flat. I have a rough ground plan for the figures, model furniture, and begin to sketch in the round. And the two lamps are always uh, focused, so I make I can chop, clip, and paste, and invent as I go. When that's done, I can tidy all that up and then it's drafted. Um, but all through that, I'm very aware of light and um, and if you know who's lighting the, the play, it's even more advantageous because it's the other half. And especially the illusionistic... So how, how do you bring light into your design ideas? Well, you, you, what the... the, 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 the um, the key moments you illustrate, you find the key, what is the most important uh, keys throughout the play, you know, whether it's um, uh, candlelight, theatre, moonlight, Cyrano, but you, be, this is the back of your head when you're working, so that what you want to, what you, um, you can build, you can attract light by building it. If you build highlights that light can find, yes. Lighting an empty stage is the worst job any can ask any lighting designer to do. Until the actors get on there, there's nothing. There's just them. So, but what you can do is to throw things in the air, either painted, gauzes, metal, whatever, whatever sculpture you have. And sculpture can be fat, can be flat, it can be thin, it can be um, 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 any kinds of. Um, this, th this stage is hard to to light, I think. The festival stage. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge. But Whitfield has has done miracles on it. Michael In Whitfield. what way? Well, he's a poet in his own right, I think, as a designer. He's an artist. Um, and he's, he's um, he, he understands. He's able to get in your skin. And he's and a brilliant lieutenant and a partner, really. So the, when you have done a, say, uh, a, did he, he did The Tempest as well, didn't he? I think he did. I, I think, think Michael did. Whitfield yeah. did do the Tempest. Yeah. Say with the Tempest then. Mm. You would have done your, your mm. with the box with your actors, yeah. your two statue actors and your yeah. two lights. You would have done your preliminary design mm. ideas. Mm. And then do you sit down with Michael Whitfield yeah. can and I do this if you talk do that. through oh, yeah. Yeah. what you can or cannot do? Or yeah, yeah. I do the same with Dwayne Schuller in New York. And the same in England when I've worked there. Um, I'm and what do you say specifically? This is what I had this in mind for this. This is what I'd like to achieve. Can I do this? So you have peaks, that, that, that. These peaks are important to me. Can we do them? Okay? And then for, once those are established, you have a grid, you have a, um, a structure. And you're talking about the peaks through the progression of a play. Would so necessarily, yeah, yeah. In te the Tempest, there's... Or, Tempest, or, or in Amadeus, for instance. I mean, it's a good one. Um, because we... I had a... Um, this is where a lighting designer, someone like Michael, is is a, a generous, a generous, um, I'm not ever sure I like the word collaborator. It sounds World War II-ish in French, <laughs> I don't know, collaborator. Um, but I, I had a piece of antique mirror, and it was something about the, you know, with Amadeus, the atmosphere of Amadeus, not the 18th century, but the atmosphere of the play. And I said, you know, Michael, I'd, I would love somehow to try and, I've always wanted to, Somehow the, the mirror, this antique mirror, would make a wonderful floor. That lights, boom, boom, you know. You'd get them up in the ceiling, off the floor. And he said, well, there's try it. Go for it. Go for it. Putting mirrors on the floor. Ma well, making a reflective floor. Not mirror, but reflective uh -huh. floor. And then at the scene shop here, Karen, um, and people she's working with came up with the most wonderful solution of mylar onto board with two-part epoxy on top. It was brilliant and caused a sensation up at the theatre. Um, so describe it again. It was it mylar, was mylar, which is a reflective film. Glued to, um, to a um, masonite. Yes. And then brown dye in it, and then two-part epoxy. So it crazed. It looked like the back of a fish when it was done. Each square, each tile. And so the epoxy tile, ripples the it crazed, reflection? It crazed the glue. The mylar was rippled. Right. The epoxy smoothed out. 
but it also crazed the die crystals. So they looked like, couldn't tell it was mirror, glass, or you couldn't tell, but it looked about that thick. Oh. Well, it was indeed an eighth of an inch. Oh. And what, again, because it wasn't a hard glass surface, it was a s soft one, the lights didn't sort of crash, you know? I mean, you didn't get hard reflections yeah. off it, but and you got as a result, Beth was able to get a marvelous uplift glow, which is great for actors, you know. And, and also, we had screens, transparent mesh screens on that, and transparent vac form, which again, um, it's hard to talk about because it's, it's all to do with actual stuff, you know. Um, but, but Michael got, once with all the, the, the salient points, a, chand a, a chandelier, a huge one, which wasn't a real one. It was concocted from acetate and tape and junk and a few crystals to make it shimmer, you know. But unlit, ghostly, backlit one thing, sidelit another. Michael was able to ring the changes on that chandelier, like I can't tell you. Um, and that's where everyone shares them. It's not just mine, it's everyone's. And what is it about light that's so magical for you? Oh, it's ever, it, it, my work can either be absolutely fucked up or not. Bad light and I'm, I'm, a, I'm sunk. And I seem... Is it because it creates atmosphere or it's space? A sense, or it's, or a, it's, the, it's, the third, it's the second painter, you see. Especially in the ballets or the operas. It's one more. I do all this and then comes Michael and then, you know. So it, it's, it's a lot. That's why I hate people coming too close. How do you mean too close? The audience close? too close. Stay out there. You're meant to look at the play from there. Don't you come close. Right. I like to keep, oh, it's all brown paper. Oh, it's all brown paper. But, right. Um, so the fine. brown paper on the London Assurance set, mm -hmm. you don't want them to know it's brown paper? No, no. It's something, some effect that it's is... It's quick, it's cheap, and it's fast. Hopefully fast. And it's doing something to them that they didn't expect. It's to catch light. 